Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And um, yeah, the throat continues to improve, which is good. I'm hoping to get through a video today. We'll see. Um, to some extent, it's going to depend on how long the puzzle takes, I reckon. But uh, therefore, there's a, there's a prize for getting through it quickly for me, which is that my throat might survive it. And we will see how that goes. Um, this puzzle is by Gemma Oane, who hasn't featured on the channel for some time, but has been very entertaining when they have appeared before. So we're going to have a look at it. I love that the rule set is really simple. This is just Arrow Sudoku. Um, <clears throat> I use the word just advisedly, but we will see how it plays out um, and we'll have a look at it in a moment. Now, if you love Arrow Sudoku, and who doesn't, there is a whole app of 100 puzzles available. One of our apps is, of course, Arrow Sudoku. You can check out all of our apps on the links under the video. Um, and they are brilliant practicing ground for Sudoku. Uh, we've also, of course, got loads of content on Patreon, including still a day or two left to enter Evening Attractions, the, um, the Negative Constraint Puzzle Hunt. It's great fun. Seven quite tough Sudokus, and well done to everybody who's done it. Um, always lots of extra content on Patreon, of course, and there's also our merchandise and Sven Sudoku Pad. Check it all out on the links under the video. You need a new wardrobe this summer, you know you do. So, we're going to have a look at Four Lane Highways by Gemma Wano now. And um, the rules are very straightforward. One to nine is going to go in every row, every column, and every box. That's normal Sudoku rules. And then digits along an arrow must sum to the digit in the attached circle. So, we do have some different colours here, so you can tell where the arrows are coming from and to. But there's no difference between the qualities of the arrows. Those two digits add up to that one. So do those two. They're all red. That digit is the same as those two because of the one cell arrows and so on. Give it a try. I don't know how this is going to play out. You can check the video length. I'm going to start now. Let's get cracking. Um, well, I like to find the three cell arrows and mark up the circles. But there's only one, is there really only one three cell arrow in this puzzle? Am I missing one? No, I'll come back to this circle in a moment. But first of all, let's bear in mind these three cells are all the same. Might even color them just in case. I mean, it gets interesting. This straight away, this digit has to appear somewhere in row one. And it's got to be in one of those three cells. And it's struggling to be on the arrow, or maybe it's not, I don't know. What about this circle then? I promised I'd come and look at that. So the arrow cells in its box add up to at least 15. I know that because the minimum digits that can fill them are one, two, three, four, five. Then we have one outside the box, which has to be at least one. That gets the total to 16. You divide that by three and it takes the total for this circle up above five. So again, this is six, seven, eight or nine. I'd hope to get a bit more out of it than that, but not to be. Now these two need to appear. I mean, it's not really working. And all the other arrows in the puzzle are two cell arrows. We've, we've looked at the one and the three, and then every other arrow is a two cell arrow. Well, this is a puzzler. Um, what's going on, guys? When you see arrows like this, where the arrow cells are in different rows, columns, and boxes from the circle. You do start wondering about set theory. But I am struggling to see how it could work in this puzzle. Okay, I'm going to try it, because I've got virtually nothing else to go on. Let's try colouring these two columns, which have a vast preponderance of the circles in the puzzle in them. And we'll colour them against where this row has two arrows in it. 
Okay, I'd better explain what I'm doing. This row has three arrows in it. Okay, let's try this. So, I don't have Simon's Scrabble bags, but if you imagine, what are the digits that occupy this column? By the rules of Sudoku, they are a set of the digits one to nine. So if you take that column and this column, you have two sets of the digits one to nine, 18 digits, two ones, two twos, etc. And the same must be true for the rows I've colored purple. So between, between those rules operating, green and purple highlighted cells are two sets of exactly the same digits. Now, what I'm going to first of all do is eliminate cells that are equally green and purple. And now I don't know what the total of purple or green is, but I do know that they're exactly the same because I've taken out the same digits from each set. Now what I'm going to do is now take out totals from each set. They're not the same as digits. Oh, it does, I don't know, this, this might not work, but those two add up to the same number as that one. So I'm just going to remove them. And now I'm not comparing sets of the same digits, but I am comparing the same totals. Those two add up to that cell. Those two add up to that cell. That one adds up to that one. So we are getting some eliminations. Probably not enough to go on, but we have many more green cells than purple. I could also convert those two into a single purple cell there. And I'm going to do that. And now, because, sorry, that was a mess. Okay, there we go. Because of my rigorous application of only cancelling exact digits, I still know that the sum of the greens is equal to the sum of the purples. And the minimum sum of the greens is 15 in each column. Now, this hasn't done it. Okay, I'm going to have to add in something else. I don't know. Okay, maybe I start again. I could just carry on adding in a couple of columns and either adding in a couple of rows or just adding in totals of 45 to the other. I'm going to start the colouring again. Sorry, this, this hasn't gone well. I do think, though, that this is probably the right approach and I might have messed up, but Let's try greening these columns again. And now, as weird as it seems, I'm going to do columns one to nine. I know they don't have many digits in, but they do have the remaining circles. Now the rows that look important to me are rows one, four, six, and nine. And the puzzle is called four-lane highways. So it's not unreasonable to think that we could be cancelling four lanes of one against four lanes of the other. So, again, I've got four sets of the digits one to nine in green, four sets of them in purple. Now I'm going to eliminate the equally coloured cells from those sets. And I'm quite encouraged that by doing that, I'm not messing with any of the arrow circles that matched I'm interested in, I think. Even though I've hit a couple of arrows here, I'm more interested in that arrow coming from that circle than this one. I'm not very interested in that arrow. Anyway, I'm not very interested in that one. Okay, so now there are some equivalences I can eliminate of totals. Those must add up to the same in purple and green. Those must add up to the same in purple and green. I can do those, definitely. These add up to the same in purple and green. Right, these two now, I've brought those into the mix. These two, we are reducing quite heavily. Look at this. Look how few purples we're getting left with. This is the way to do it. 
Oh, Gemma Wano, that's brilliant. Is that really it? Have I done that right? Look how much of the grid is green and how little of it is purple now. I almost think this, okay, it almost can't work, but it does work, right. There we go, look at that elimination. We've got three cells left in the central column. They add up to maximum 24, nine, eight, and seven. These greens in column one add up to a minimum of 10, one, two, three, and four. These greens add up to a minimum of 10, that's 20. Now we have to keep the total of those cells down to four to match up these totals that have to match according to what we've done. And we can just do that if we put one there, two there, and one there. So that's what we get to do. What a brilliant set setup that is. Set is set equivalence theory. And it is used, it's quite hard to spot, as you see. I, I mean, I'm, I spotted the right thing in nine minutes. I'm very pleased with that. I can often take longer, much longer sometimes, as you will have seen in the past. Now, we can also put 987 in purple, and that fixes this cell as a six, because in column five, we've used 987. And that's going to advance our, our little fun a bit more. We get to put two three on this six arrow, Oh, that's not known. Well, it's not a six now. We are again putting six somewhere here. I still don't know if it's on the arrow, but I'm hoping that I've got enough information to solve the puzzle. Look, I can compare ones. I need a one in the central column. I know where to put it. This is a four five pair in the central column. This circle now is adding a one and four or five to become five or six. Um, twos, there's a two somewhere here, it's not there. So two is in one of those cells and therefore one of these circles is a three because either that purple arrow adds up to three or that red arrow. So there's a three in one of those cells. These can't have one or three in now, they're a two, four pair. It's really interesting how this unfolds now. That is adding six and something, so it's seven, eight, or nine. I mean, the coloring I've done, I think I'm gonna remove it. Well, I don't know, I, I was assuming I would need high and low digits now, maybe I won't. Actually, that can't be seven. This has to be two or three, but we've worked out it can't be three. So that's the two. That becomes an eight. This is a three in the circle, and that isn't, and this isn't two. We've now got a three in the circle, so that's a two, one pair. That is a very helpful circle. We get a four on the right. We've got a two on the left. There's probably some triples and things forming. It's a little hard to spot everything all at once. That four, five pair makes this a six, which sorts out the arrow. The six pair here, I don't know. It's either one, five or two, four. That's an, a pair adding up to eight, but one and two have already been used in the box. So that's now a three, five pair. This won't be a three, because we can't put a two or a one actually on the arrow. In fact, that arrow has to be at least three plus four. So in fact, it has to have a three on it by Sudoku. There's a three there and a three there. And there's definitely a three in one of those cells. So there's definitely a three on the arrow. This is seven, eight, or nine. So the other digit on the arrow is four, five, or six. Three is down in one of these cells. Oh, I know exactly which one. I've got that right. This is seven, eight, or nine over here. It's not eight. That's in the column already. Um, do I know about this? No. Oh, this and this, they're consecutive because of that one. 
So they could be four under five, or not six, five under six or six under seven, because we've had that. So it could be seven or eight under eight or nine. Ah, but one of four or five must go up here. Maybe both. So we can't put this as a five, four pair. So now this is a seven, eight, nine, triple. Eight must be in one of these consecutive cells. <clears throat> That's also not eight. And suddenly I know where eight is in the central column. Right there. <clears throat> that is now a four, five pair. And these have to add up to four or five. So they're going to use two of the small digits, right. That makes a quadruple in box one of the small digits. And where is two in that quadruple? It's on this arrow. And that is immediately going to tell us that this is not a four, because it would need another two on the arrow. That's very pretty. So that's five, that's four. This is a two, three pair. That makes, that gets us all our green digits sorted out, I think. Look at this, it's working. Oh, it's working up to a point. Now, those two add up to this. Therefore, they could be, this can't be three, because then they would only add up to five or six. So that's a five. That fixes this as three. This can't be nine. Right, it's seven or eight. Oh, let's do a bit more Sudoku first. That is a two, four pair, because it can't be one, five, since we got that. That makes this three, right. That makes this two, and that's seven. That was worth doing first. The two looks across. This is just flowing utterly beautifully now. I mean, I'm a big fan of the puzzle. What's in here? We can't use two, three, or four, so we've got to put a one in it. I suppose there's still quite a lot of options, but I'm going to notate that there's a one in it. Actually, Sudoku could have told me that. Um, right, I was going to look at this seven. Up here, ah, oh, again, we can't use two, three, or four, so that's a one, six pair. This now doesn't use one or two and is a three, four pair that can be written in. It's all sorts of X-wings. Oh, they're unfolded by the four. Two, four, two, one, six, one. And this is just coming together like a beautiful concoction from a chef or something. Now, these have a one in. They are either one, seven or one, eight. In the top row, we need a five and an eight in the corners. 9 and 2, no, 9 and 8 in the next row. 7, 5, 9 in the next row. That wasn't the way to go about it. I still need to finish these arrows, don't I? So, this is a good place to start. I can't have a 5 in now. So it's either, th oh, well that actually accords with what's in the circle. Maybe here then. It can't be 1, 5. Ooh, so where's five in the column? Okay, I don't know where five is. Sorry, where's five in the row? Since this can't be one five, as that's not allowed to be six. Five must be in a corner. And it's forming an X-wing with the other corners. So those two corners must have two fives. And therefore nothing else in the columns can be a five. And that is telling me that those two cells can't be a five, which I could actually have worked out from seeing those two. I thought that was an exciting conclusion. It wasn't very. Um, there must be a quick way to finish this. Maybe I will stumble across it. Two, there's a two in one of these cells. Three, three, four, four. There's a four in one of those. I'm just reading the rows at the moment, trying to get done. Oh, seven can't be in those, and is in one of those two. Um, <clears throat> I 
I don't know. I'm sure there is an easy way to finish this, but as I say, maybe I'll come across it in a moment. One eight. Not sure if it's one eight or one seven. There. Two one three four. One four six three. One two four five three six. This is seven eight or nine. No, it can't be nine anymore since we got the eight. So that is seven or eight. Oh, I am, am I, you, I can't remember if I was, yes, and no, I'm not using the five X wing, it doesn't matter. Anyway, this is now one six or one seven. Three, eight, four, two, then we need a nine in the row. Oh, so one of these is using a seven now. It's either seven in the circle or seven on the arrow. Um, I'm still not quite seeing how that lets me progress. This is five, six, or nine. That's not interesting. That's eight or nine. That's six, eight, or nine. And this could be five. I'm sure this is, this, this should be over quicker. Gives you a chance to shout at the screen today. I know, I know you've been longing to do that. Six. Six is there or there in box. Oh, sorry about email notifications. That will really upset Lost Cabrio, who does not like it when I've left them on. Um, <clears throat> five. Oh, no, I thought there had to be a nine in one of those. That's not true. Wow, there must be a quick way to finish it, and I can't find it. This pair is either three, four, or three, six. No, there has to be a four in it by Sudoku. Yes, that's going to help massively. So that four is telling me there has to be a four here. So that is a given 3-4 pair that I hadn't spotted. That's what you're shouting at. Right, 7 there, 8, 9, this is going to do it. 9, 7, 9, we get a 9. Uh, I've got something wrong there. What I, where I went wrong was in box 5, where that's 7, 9, 7, 9. That's better. Now, these can't be 9s in the corner, and that can't even be 8. That seems to be a 5-6 pair in the corner. Yes, that's because I worked out that 7 had to be somewhere on this arrow. So it's not there, and now it, in the bottom row it is on that arrow. And that gets us done down there. That gives us an 8 there. That sorts out the top corners, that sorts out the bottom corners. Then I can put in 9 and 7 and finish column 1. Then I can finish column 9. And now I am firing on all cylinders, finally. Cooking with gas and all that good stuff. This is a 1-8 pair that's now resolved. This is a 1-7 pair. That's a 7-9 pair. Where does 9 go in box 7? I don't know. Uh, that's not a 9. This is a 7-8 pair. Well, we need a 6 in this box. Let's do that. Then we need an 8 in this row, and that is going to finish off columns 7 and 8, I think. 9, 7, they look finished. This is a 2, 5 pair. This is a 5, 6 pair. They are resolved. That's going to do the 5, 2 pair. 3, 2, 3, 4. We get a 4 and a 9, and that is four lane highways completed. What a lovely set theory puzzle that took some spotting. Um, there were a lot of unused cells in columns 1 and 9, which is, I think, why I didn't bring them into the set theory at the beginning. But, of course, once they had to contain so many low digits, the puzzle was very solvable. Very clever setup. I don't honestly know how constructors achieve that sort of thing. It's absolutely brilliant. Thank you for watching, as always, on the channel. A pleasure to bring these puzzles to you. And I hope to see you again in due course. Bye for now.